All right, in this video, I'm going to be moving to the folder uh, part 09 matrix algebra. And in that folder, I'm going to be opening up part 080 matrix algebra right here. As always, there might be some notes at the top of each document. You can ignore those. Uh, I like to split these documents into multiple videos to try and keep the videos short. Links to all these documents are all in the video description. You can check them out there. This video, we're going to look at the dot product and matrix multiplication. So let's get right into the first section here with a little bit of review. So up to this point, we've only seen element-wise array operations. So I'm going to run this section, and we've got two matrices, A and B, and I do two element-wise calculations on them. So I do a multiplication using the dot star operator, and I do a division using the dot slash operator. And you can see the results right here. And what happens is with either the multiplication or the division, the values are paired up between the two matrices. So for the multiplication, I mean, these are all twos. The two here gets multiplied specifically by this two. If I changed this value, then this value would get multiplied by a different number when I did this multiplication. And with the division, since I do B divided by A, each value in B is divided by one of these twos. Again, if I changed one of them, I would get a different result. And we see our results right here. So this is what we've been doing. But now we're going to get into something a little bit different. Scrolling on down. And the first thing that you need to learn is what's called the dot product. And the dot product, there's a built-in MATLAB function to perform it. By the way, all of the code that I'm going to show you in this video works perfectly in Octave in exactly the same way as I'm demonstrating here in MATLAB. And the function name for the dot product is simply abbreviated dot. So let me run this section. So I've got a vector A with values 1, 2, and 3, and I've got a vector B with values 7, 9, and 11. And B is a column vector and A is a row vector. That actually doesn't really affect hardly anything, um, but there is a reason that I did that. And then the result of the dot product of A and B is 58. Okay, well, where did that come from? It simply came from 1 times 7 plus 2 times 9 plus 3 times 11. And that's what the dot product is. And understanding the dot product is essential to understanding matrix multiplication. Next, I'm going to go to this web page right here, which of course you can find in this document, or um, I'll try and remember to link this also in the video description, so you can just go right to this web page. But here it is right here. It's mathisfun.com slash algebra slash matrix dash multiplying dot html. I like to use dark backgrounds on my computer, so when you go to this web page, it will probably appear as a white background like this, but I like the dark background. So that's what I'm going to use. And the first part of this website shows element-wise multiplication. It takes a matrix, multiplies each element by two, gets a new matrix. Great. That's called scalar multiplication. In fact, let's see if zooming in helps a little bit here. That's called scalar multiplication. Fantastic, that's what we've been doing. Now when we multiply one matrix times another matrix, we do something different, and that different calculation involves the dot product. So what you see here is I am matrix multiplying two matrices, a two by three on the left with a three by two on the right. And the first step is to perform the dot product of the first row of the first matrix with the first column of the second matrix. And there's that 58 right there. So these are literally the vectors that I just showed you in MATLAB in the orientations that they are presented here. And I also got 58 over there. But then we need to do further dot products. So here it's showing the dot product of the first row of the matrix on the left with the second column of the matrix on the right. And that's how you get the first row second column value in the solution matrix. You got the first row first column by dot producting the first row with the first column. And that's how you got the 58. And so we're going to fill in the last two values here by getting the dot product of the second row first column to get the second row first column value in the solution. And then we're going to dot product the second row second column to get the second row second column value in the solution here. So performing all of that stuff, this is the solution we get at the end. Now let's jump back to MATLAB and see how it looks in MATLAB. All right, scrolling on down slightly. So here are those exact two matrices that were on that web page, and I'm going to display them out, and then I'm going to multiply them right here. Very important. Notice that I am not using the dot star multiplication. I'm just using star or asterisk. This is a different thing. This is matrix multiplication. Let's go ahead and run it. 
All right, so there's my two original matrices, and there's my solution right there. And if you either move the video or go to that web page, you'll see that it's exactly the same as what they got as well. Now let's jump back to that web page briefly before we move on in MATLAB. Continuing on down, why do it this way? And then they give an example, but it's kind of a silly example, um, but I'm gonna just briefly go through it anyway. So suppose we've got some bakery or pie shop or something, and they sell three different types of pies. And here are the prices right here. Uh, I don't know where you live, but blueberries are not that cheap where I live. Um, but uh, we got these pies right here. And then they have this table or chart showing how many of each pie was sold during different days of the week. And what you can do is you can put this data into a matrix and you can put the prices into a vector and then you can matrix multiply to figure out how much money was made on each day of the week. And so that's basically what they go through and show right here. Uh, let's see, did they show the answer? Yeah, so here it is right here. So they make a vector of the prices and they make a matrix of how many of each pie were sold on each day and they matrix multiply them dot producting the prices with the amounts to get the amount of money made on each day of the week that they're open. They're open four days a week, apparently. And if you think about it, multiplying a bunch of pairs of numbers together and then adding the results is just a very common thing that we end up doing in a variety of situations. Anytime you go buy different items and you buy more than one of something, well, you're multiplying the amounts that you bought with the prices of each of those items summing up all the results, and that's the total that you need to pay. But as we will see in subsequent videos, the multiplying and adding is very useful in a variety of physics and engineering situations. Matrix multiplication is exceedingly useful in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Humanity is very interested in performing this operation of paired up multiplications and summing up over those paired up multiplications and doing it many, many times in a row very efficiently and quickly which is what matrix multiplication is. So that's all for this web page. I'm gonna move back to MATLAB and stick in MATLAB, but there's some more stuff you can check out in here if you like. Uh, it's a great web page. Um, I will note it's maths is fun. In the United States, typically we just write math without an S at the end, but um, certainly in England and maybe in other parts of the world, uh, it's typically referred to as maths with an S at the end. Anyway, it's mathsisfun.com. Great web page. Let me go back to MATLAB here. And in fact, one of the immediate things that was going to be discussed on that web page, but I also have in the comments here, is that there are certain limitations on matrix multiplication. Namely, that when you multiply two matrices, you have to make sure the inner dimensions match. So in this example I just ran right here, A was a 2 by 3 matrix multiplied by a three by two matrix. And when I say the inner dimensions, I mean literally the ones that are on the inside of this calculation. Those have to be the same number. If not, your dot product won't work because the three over here is the number of values in each row in matrix A, and the three over here is how many numbers are in each column of matrix B. And your dot product is multiplying the values in the rows of the first matrix with the columns in the second matrix, and everybody needs to be paired up with some other number. And if they're not, well, it just, it just doesn't work. Now, the other dimensions, the outer dimensions here, don't have to match up. Multiplying two by threes and three by twos, you could equally multiply five by threes and three by ones, or two by fours and four by sixes. It's just those inner dimensions that have to match up. All right, continuing on down here. As we saw on that web page, matrix multiplication is a series of dot products. Now these are the exact same matrices as before, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And so there's the matrix multiplication, but then what I show below right here is that if I just dot product row one of A with column two of B, I get row one column two of the solution. And that's not like by accident, that's exactly what happened. And if I change this one right here to a two, We'll try and anticipate what I'm going to get. I'm going to get row two, column two of the solution because I dot producted row two of A with column two of B. And you can fiddle around with all these, change this B to a one right here and get the 139. And you can see that's what's happening. Continuing on down right here. So I want to show in multiple different ways how to calculate the exact same thing. So I'm going to run this section and then talk through the code. So I have two vectors. I have A and X. 
and then I print out the number two five times. But I calculated this number two in five different ways. So let's check it out. The first is I did a matrix multiplication between A and X. Then I did this written out dot product where I multiplied pairs of values and I summed across them. And if you look carefully at it, you'll see these are the exact same values as are in A and are in X. And then perhaps one of the more complicated ways to do it, I did the sum of A element wise multiplied with the transpose of X. My goodness, that's a little bit difficult, but this is basically just a dot product. I'm not even sure if I really needed to transpose X, but I did it just to make sure they lined up properly. Or I could just dot product A and X, which is also the exact same thing. Or if you want to be really technical about it, you could do this for loop right here. This is a pretty basic for loop where I'm totaling up a sum and the sum is a bunch of products. A at position K times X at position K. The paired values being multiplied and then I just sum them into this result five and I display out all the results down here. So my goal in this section is to demystify matrix multiplication and get you to believe that it's not that complicated. Because if you can look at the dot product and see, oh, okay, you just multiply each pair of numbers together and then add up all the results and you think that's not complicated. Well, a matrix multiplication is literally just a bunch of dot products. So hopefully you can then extend it to that level and be like, okay, this is not too complicated. Now let's look more about the importance of the dimensions involved in the matrix multiplication. So I'm going to run this section. There's going to be an error. That error is on purpose. So don't worry too much about that. Let me scroll up to the top here. So I have these two matrices, A and B. A is a three by two, B is a two by three. I display them out, great. And I'm allowed to multiply them. A matrix multiplied times B. And since these are their dimensions and the inner dimensions match up, I will get a result. And that result is displayed right here. It's a three by three matrix. Now, can I multiply B times A? Well, yes, I can actually do that as well because again, the inner dimensions match up, but this time my solution is a two by two. Perhaps you can even already see the pattern. It is true that when you matrix multiply, the outer dimensions become the dimensions of your solution. So since there's a three over here, that becomes the number of rows in my solution. Since there's a three over here, there are gonna be three columns in my solution. When there's two over here, there's gonna be two rows in my solution. When there's two over here, there's gonna be two columns in my solution. And they don't have to be the same number again. We could change those outer numbers and we'd get different results, but they would still work. It's the inner numbers that have to match up. But what happens when I have another two by three matrix and I try and multiply it times B? Well, it, it doesn't work at all. Incorrect dimensions for matrix multiplication, it just, it just doesn't work because these inner dimensions are not the same. We're gonna be doing more matrix multiplication, but I'm gonna wrap up this video right there.